Most authors fall into specific categories. In the first group, we have the people that don't know what ciphers are, really, and just insert the word cipher in their story, and then follow this with reading the cipher we have, and just give us the plain text directly. The second group feels really clever, as they make up all new ciphers that have no security and are tricky only until you figure out what the system is. R.W. Chambers, Frank L. Packard, and Fergus Hume are in both camps. The third group of writers actually have a good idea of what they're doing, or had consulted a professional mathematician. These include J.J. Connington and Anna Green. The third group produces good ciphers that are worth playing with, but even then they almost always have mistakes in their ciphers. William LeCue is in a category all his own, so far. A writer that produced a clever cipher system so broken that even he can't follow it. I'm going to walk through all the errors and inconsistencies and wrap up by showing what the fixed system would be. LeCue's The Four Faces revolves around playboy Michael Barrington and his fight against a crime gang calling themselves The Four Faces. Barrington's friends include Jack Osborne and Dick Chaloner. Dick notices ciphers showing up on the front pages of some of the London newspapers, clips them out, and starts working on solving them. The four messages we get to see are 1, 2, 3, and 4. Rather than going through a full analysis for breaking this system here, I'll give Dick's solution. His claim is that the cipher alphabet starts with L for the first word and skips every other letter, as so. The problem should be obvious right away. The letters loop after J. Okay, so now, initially, it looks like our two alphabets should be, for the word one alphabets, the plain text is A through Z, and the cipher alphabet is L through J repeated. This pairs up letters from the front and back halves of the plain text alphabet, where L represents A or N, N represents B or O, P represents C or P, and so on. We shift the cipher alphabet one letter to the left for each word. So for word two, the alphabet starts at M. The plain text alphabet is still A through Z. The cipher alphabet is M through K repeated. This time, M represents A or N, O represents B or O, Q represents C or P, etc. From here, the following words alternate between the two alphabets, which get rotated once each for each new word. So, for the word three alphabets, the cipher alphabet starts at N, and the word four alphabet, the cipher alphabet starts at O. Now that we know the pattern, the first two letters in message one are DC, the initials of Dick's sister, Dulcie Challoner. R can be D or Q, and P can be C or P. If you know what the plain text is supposed to be, you can reason out that of the D, Q, and C, P pairs, we need to take DC. Immediately, the system breaks down. According to the rules, we should shift the alphabet one letter left to start with each new word. The rules are kind of followed more closely in message 4, where XW is also DC, but I'll discuss the mistake there later. But in message 1, LeCue uses the same alphabet, starting with L for the first two words. With the cipher alphabet starting with L on word 2, the plain text can be B is I or V, J is M or Z, P is C or P, and so on. From this grouping, knowing what letters we need to take, we can get improving. But there's no explanation for this step in the book, and having to anagram every word is going to be really confusing to the recipient. The alphabet for the third word, W-A-M-I-I, -I, does start with M, W can be F or S, A can be H or U, M can be A or N, I can be L or Y. 
From this, we can get shall. I'll let you solve the rest of the message, and I'll give the plain text solution at the end of the video. Going to message two, we start at L again for the first word. R can be D or Q, L can be A or N, X can be G or T, T can be E or R. We can get date. However, word two breaks the pattern we followed in message one. We should start the alphabet with M, but X isn't in this alphabet while E is. E can be J or W, but we have nothing for X. We can get around this problem by modifying the alphabets. Start at L and skip every other letter until we get to J. Then continue from K up to I. For word one with a new cipher alphabet, we get R is D, L is A, X is G, T is E. For word two, we use M through K in the first half of the cipher alphabet. Then with the second half, we shift the L, J portion left one letter to get N, P, R, T, V, and so on, and use that. Here, E is equal to J, X is equal to S. It's still wrong, but we can expect the plain text to read date is. We just have to decide what the mistake is that gives us J instead of I. We have three choices of excuse. One, LeCue or the publisher created a typo where they used E instead of C. Two, they used the wrong starting letter for the alphabet. Three, the Gutenberg people screwed up the OCR step when they scanned the book. The only copy of the four faces I can find is on Gutenberg. Archive.org doesn't have the page scans. Anyway, change E to C. Okay, we're closer to having non-broken alphabets, but the plain text still isn't coming out right for the rest of message two. We can assume that the third word is a date and should be March 4. Right now, L is Z, N is A, V is E, R is C, B is H. Wrapping the alphabets is getting trickier. I want to place the L at the end of the alphabet as would happen with a simple shift left, but really the two halves have to be treated separately and pasted together just before using the completed alphabet. With this new alphabet, we're getting M-A-E-C-H, where the letter V needs to be a U. Is this another OCR error? I don't know. Word 4 is okay, but with the new alphabet ordering, have I broken anything? Z is S, C is H, O is A, and K is L. Yes, still okay. It's almost easier to just build an alphabet table and use that, rather than trying to keep all of this straight in software. Moving on, Dick tries to demonstrate part of his explanation on the following text. Notice that this is actually the same message as message number 2, that we've just been looking at, but somehow he switched the date from March 4 to something else. This could be chalked up to a simple editing error, where LeCue had intended for a crime to be committed in March, then changed his mind in a later edit. But using the rules I've discussed so far, I'll let you figure out the answer if you want. Pause here and come back when you're ready. It's pretty obvious that the date is now supposed to be February 28. But let's just get the letter position differences by subtracting out February from this word. S minus F is 19 minus 6 is 13. R minus E is 18 minus 5 is 13. O minus B, 13. E minus R, 13, 13, 13, 13. 13. Note, if any of the values go negative, just add 26 to make them positive. And what do you know? February was shoehorned into the book using a Caesar shift cipher with a shift of 13. February wasn't encrypted using LeCue's system. How broken can you make this? Well, we'll find out. Let's just get this over with. In message 4, 
we have the following text. There's no way this next part could be a simple typo or OCR error. We're told that the first three words are Osborne and Barrington. And the flaw I mentioned earlier is that to get DC, we can't have a space between X and W, meaning that the correct text has to be this. Okay, just to keep from giving myself headaches, I'm going to present the correct word alphabets as a table at the end. And then I'll give the corrected messages as they should have been in the book based on my alphabets. This is an amazing amount of work to fix a cipher type that's not all that useful. The four faces would have been better off with Gronsfeld, which was in popular usage in British newspapers at the time. Anyway, that's all I've got here. If you want to read the book yourself, the links are in the description below. See you at the next bookshop. Ending. Our messages are, DC improving, shall settle all soon. Number two, date is March 4, shall stay at Mount Royal Hotel, Bedlington. Number three, car will be at Cloon Cross, two day, March 4. Number four is actually message two, but is part of the decryption explanation. The word for the date doesn't follow the correct pattern and instead is just Caesar shifted 13. Date is February 28. Shall stay at Mount Royal Hotel, Bedlington. With message 5, there are inconsistencies here. There shouldn't be a space between X and V. The JVTZ segment is not capitalized, but Hampstead is in the plain text. And we have similar issues with March and February above. Plus, we need to have a space between Osborne and AND. Osborne and Barrington suspect. Take precautions. DC with me, Hampstead. And that's it. Got questions, comments, or suggestions? Leave them in the comments below. Enjoyed this video? Then I encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. If you want to show further support, you can join us over at the Black Chamber Patreon page, where you can get access to more how-to videos and PDFs on solving the cipher types covered here, additional crypts to solve, and more. Links pinned in the comments below. See you at the next drop point.